Welcome to the pastor and professor. I'm not really sure how that skipped to, from two minutes. Our timer just, uh, Doug, you're still muted, bub. You're still muted. That's that's how surprising it was. Yeah, I uh, was. I, I looked up doing... and I saw five, four, and I was like, "What I, happened?" I have no idea what happened. I looked and it was two minutes. All of a sudden, it just. <laughs> I have no idea how that just happened. Anyways, you are we're yeah. live with the pastor and professor. Um, welcome. Now I got I got to test this now because I was I was doing that. All right. Um, yeah, you know, seems like it's par hey, for the course. Every week. A new surprise. So we didn't even get to our song. <laughs> oh, I, gotta, I, know. I gotta at least put our our theme song on. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Uh, well, welcome to the show. Right. If you are joining us <laughs> on this beautiful Thursday, which I thought it was Friday um, afternoon. Sorry. Uh, yeah, if you're if you're joining just, us, please say hi gave. in the chat. Uh, if you're on Facebook and I'm sorry, in YouTube and comments in the comments on Facebook, we'd love to hear where you're calling in from or where you're watching from. Just say hi. If you have any questions for us, let us know. Um, I apologize for last night. Normally, we're live on Wednesday nights uh, with the crazy weather here in northern Michigan. We had rain, ice, snow, heavy power lines, all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, also allowed me uh, a little bit of time, which in theory, it allowed me a little time, me a little bit of time to kind of catch my breath and take a little bit better care of myself. That didn't really happen a whole lot. <laughs> um, that was the intent. Uh, right. But I have this show and I have my baseball show coming up, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, so anyway, how are you, Doug? How was your week? I, I'm good. Good. Just very, you know, kind of relaxed, waiting for the car to get fixed and uh, that gives me some time to catch up on other things, which are a necessity, right? Like COVID did that in 2020, <laughs> yeah. that month of March, that month yep. of March, I knocked out 10 years of honeydew <laughs> list that had, I had just been putting off. So, you know, take a week off from work and get some stuff done. So that's what I've been doing. That's good. That's good. Um, I just also realized I changed real quick. I, I Doug and I talked about, I don't know. I don't even know how long ago it was now. Two hours ago. Uh, yeah. deciding what we're going to do and what time we are actually going to go live. And if we were going to go live, I thought we were just maybe recorded, but we said, we might as well go live. Uh, I just shaved. So this is, I'm, I'm playing. My, my kids will not let me shave the mustache. I've never had a mustache with beard before until like the last little while. My kids will not let me shave the mustache. They really want me to go handlebar on this and I'm close. Yeah. So I just, if I had the gel, I could do it, but now I just don't know what to do with it. So I'm a little, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I have no well, idea. Well, it's I'm kind doing. of just just rock the Fu Manchu for a while until you get your gel, and there you go. Yeah, Juju is like she wants me to grow it all the way down here. That I am not doing. I am not going to do that. <laughs> I do not like that. Um, uh, I know that my mom does not want me to do the handlebar thing for some reason. In her time, that was really. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's classic. It's classic. I love it. So I shaved. At least the best I can. I didn't actually fully shave my nice clip, but also I realized that this shirt is a terrible color for our screens. Uh yeah, it kind of clashes a tiny bit. Yeah, but you look good. You look good in it. Well, it brings out you. your eyes. It's, it's, um, it's you went back great. to black. I'm too. gonna stop. You went yeah, back I, to black. No, no, this is dark blue. Dark blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, with a little bit of gray mixed in, some in there. Uh, I hey, mean, it's almost is, black. Is right that now. the shirt when you did the photo shoot? No, that's a different one, and I'll, put, I'll yeah. wear that next. I'll wear that next week in your honor. Okay, so. all right. I, re I remember <laughs> you doing that photo shoot because we were still in we were still in California together at the time. Yep. So, um, I don't have that picture to show you, but I like well, it. I was going to say maybe I'll send you some pics so we can scroll through them next week. I'm I'm going to give you one with my goatee super long. Oh yeah, yeah. When I when I did that, and uh, and then I'll send you the pic from the photo shoots at the apartment complex cool cool um i wanted to mess with you when you were taking those pictures and get you laughing uh when you were doing them yeah oh, I, I, that was couple totally of them you're so insane. serious you're so serious i, I was like, i was uh, i had to get my serious yes you were you were you were serious about those. <laughs> all right well um i know tonight we're gonna dive into uh, the family a little bit more and uh yeah 
and and discuss that a little bit. Uh, we'll see how long the show is. We'll we'll try to keep it under an hour, an hour at least. Um, and again, if you're joining us, please say hi. Tell us where you're calling in from. If any, if you have any questions throughout the show, please let us know. I have no idea if anybody's going to join us in the middle of the day like this. I know a lot of people are working and so forth, but it lives on forever on Facebook and YouTube. But I do have a few things to talk about. Go for it. Uh, first, um, and you might, and this might witness, you might witness this t- today on the show. I'm really struggling cognitively. And I know Annetta hates when I, when I do this and I talk about it, um, kind of put it out there, but, um, I'm really, my, my brain is, is not functioning well. So you may see me hit the countdown on accident and it starts the show live. I don't know. Um, uh, things like that. You made me see me forget things or, or, uh, I might lose track of some things. So, um, so bear with me. Um, I think, you know, I, I wanted this week to kind of be relaxing so I can catch, catch up. You know, I kind of backtracked on some things schedule wise so I can take better care of myself. There's too many things going on in my head and, and trying to, you know, now that I can do some things, trying to do some things that I, you know, I shouldn't be. So, um, I'm a little taxed. So, uh, so bear with me on that. Um, I do want to talk about sports. Of course. Uh, let's talk about the NCAA tournament since, uh, we're at the final four and let's do it. And, uh, tell me how did you guys, did you do a bracket? I did not. Uh, I, I, I I saved myself, saved myself the personal embarrassment of, you know, missing out because I would have like gigantically blown it in the first two rounds. <laughs> did you, did you at least mentally, did you pick a winner? Or did you want somebody to win besides Virginia tech? Um, um, yeah, I, you know, I thought some of the teams that I thought would make deeper runs are already gone. Um, pleasantly surprised that the ACC showed up, uh, besides Virginia tech, uh, you know, and, and I was a, a big Tar Heel fan, as a kid um, in the Michael Jordan days and James Worthy and Sam Perkins and the list can go on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, happy for them and hoping that they'll, you know, get a chance at another one. I'm, I'm not, again, a, if coach K were to it'd be poetic for yeah. him to win, you know, so I couldn't be, are you like, a hater? Sad either are way. you a Duke hater? Not a hater. Yeah. I, I'm a Duke hater. I'm not, I, I don't want to say I'm a coach K hater. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, he's, the face of the program pretty much. So it's face hard college to college basketball to for the most part. Up and two. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and he was good. And, and I like him as the coach of the, of the United States men's team. Yeah, so he does a good job with that. Uh, he does a good job with that. So I, you know, I'd be happy if that, you know, ran that way. Um, we'll see. You know, interesting. Yeah. So, you know, Duke and North Carolina both have 40 plus, you know, appearances in the NCAA tournament. This is the first time they've ever met in the tournament. I know. I yeah, thought I was shocked crazy. at that. Yep. That's, that's crazy. Well, it, I mean, I can see it as usually they're both fairly high seated, so they yeah. would break them up in different re- regions. Yeah. But yeah, shocked that this is the first. But it's yeah. great that it's in the final four. You'd think yeah. it would have happened sometime in the lead eight or final four at some point. But so, yeah, yeah my bracket, <laughs> you know, I did my pre my uh, show, my uh, bracket reveal show with my buddy Joe and. I had made comments that I was, I did really well in my brackets all of a sudden in the last like seven times I've done them after sucking for 40 years. This might be the worst bracket known to man. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I mean, I know a lot of people had the same, t- some of the team teams, they went out. So it kind of evens out. This was unbelievably awful. I think I only had five of the sweet 16, which is really bad. I had zero of the elite eight. Wow. I, I mean, that is record breaking bad. Uh so my kids are making fun of me now for that. Especially cuz I kind of mouthed off about it a little bit too. Um um uh, yeah, well, I know. will say Duke at this point um Cubby is going to be really upset with you because he does not want he's really not liking North Carolina cuz he really wanted to say St. Peter's see St. Peter's win. Um, yeah, that was a fun that run. Been great. That was a, that was. was a really fun run uh watching them and you know uh uh, you know, they, their, their coach just moved on to Seton hall. So I think yeah. they, they announced it officially today. I think, um, good for him. I mean, that's his alma mater yeah. and, and good for right. him. And you know, what he did with that team was awesome. You know, 
that was that was great. Speaking of speaking of brackets, I had a, a good friend. He does not follow basketball at all. Not really big into sports. He filled out a bracket and went twenty for twenty one in the in the first round. It was crazy. I met like that's insane. how it works. That's how it happens. Right? Isn't it? You know, isn't it's it? like yeah. That just that just pisses me off, Doug. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I mean, this was mine was so so bad, um, but it was fun. It was a good tournament. We had no buzzer beaters, yeah. not one. I know, not one buzzer yep. beater in the tournament. We, I, I think I'll have to go back and and check this, but I think the games were probably closer than any other tournament we've ever had. There's always close games, but the majority of these games were you know, went down to the last, you know, three minutes and particularly the last minute in a lot of cases. So I'll have to go do some research on that. But all the games were so yeah. close, except for a couple of blots in the first round. Actually, the the lead eight round, uh, there was two two kind of big big wins there. Arizona, not Arizona. Yeah. Um, sweet 16 rounds, I guess. So. Right. But yeah, sweet Arizona 16. won big and somebody else won big, too. I forgot. North but, Carolina won. Yeah, won North big, Carolina. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, I'm I'm – at this point, who do we got? We got we got Duke, North Carolina, and then we have uh, Kansas, Villanova, Kansas, Villanova, Kansas, Villanova. Yep. Yeah. Um, I like Jay Wright. Um, don't want. I, I'd like to see Coach K win at this point. You know, he's a Chicago yeah. guy, so I have I have that. Uh, the coach, uh, Coach K, is retiring. For those of you who don't know, so it'll be cool to see this, him go out like this. I will say, watching him in this tournament. I didn't realize how fragile he is. He, he, he definitely, his age really shows now. Uh, I guess yeah. I just haven't paid attention. Um, but I think he's really enjoying this run. Um, and it, yeah. it's cool to kind of see the, the coach in waiting, John Shire. Uh, they've already announced mm-hmm. that when coach uh, K announced his retirement, that John Shire would take over. Uh, he played for Duke uh, some years ago. He is from Illinois from Glenview. He used to cut my grass. And when, ah. he, when he was in high school, he cut my grass for a year. Um, really good kid, really good kid. So I'm, I'm hoping cool. he does well. And he filled in for coach K when coach K was out. Right. Um, so we'll see, we'll yep. see some at this point yeah. pulling for coach K. I'm doing that. All, All right. right. So that's NCAA tournament more than I wanted to talk about. Cause I really want to talk about baseball. I, I know that was really what you wanted to get at. Yes. Uh, so I don't know, or don't remember your allegiances with baseball growing up. Cincinnati Reds. Big oh yeah, Red we machine. did. Now I remember. Yeah. 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 We, I don't, we pri- privately, I think had that okay. conversation, All right. but, uh, you know, uh, but. So you're a bandwagon now, guy basically, right? <laughs> well, I, you know, I still Virginia doesn't have, have any affinity. teams. No, you know, my brother's a big Washington nationals fan. Um, but he lived in DC area for a long time. So he, he kind of adopted them. Um, I obviously moving out to LA have kind of made the Dodgers, my de facto baseball team. Um, I I was just never a huge baseball fan, football, basketball, soccer were my sports. And so, um, you know, I know like you're going to have to reconsider our friendship. now. I'm I'm uh, (laughs) going through my head now. It's like, how did we get to this point where we're doing a show together? So, yeah, I'm happy for the Dodgers. Uh, and uh, Dave Roberts has guaranteed a World Series victory yeah, this year. So I don't ever, <laughs> ever remember a manager doing that. I've seen some players do that, but especially with baseball. It's 162 yeah. games. Um, I'll get to there in a second. So, yeah, I, I did not yeah, okay. I did not know that. You know, baseball is my, my love, my first love. So, you know, they say, yeah. I'm going to bring up sex on the show. Um <clears throat> I, they say that, you know, the guys think about other things out there. They say guys think about sex every five mm-hmm. seconds. I think about baseball every two seconds, basically. Um, <laughs> in, in, in being 54 years old, I still, I still do. Um, I, I think yeah. about it all the time. Um, it doesn't consume me, but it's just always there. Um, right. And I, I love baseball. I could go, if I'm driving around, I'll stop and watch Little League games. I'll watch high school games. I just love baseball. I love just seeing, especially now when you don't see this as often, I love driving or going past somewhere, seeing kids play catch, you know, especially with playing catch yeah. with your dad. I remember being five years old, not can't waiting for my dad to come home so we can just play catch. And my older brothers played ball, and so I, I I've been around baseball all my life, and I love it, love it, love it. And I think about it all the time. Uh, obviously, we've been through this. Cubs and Indians are my my loves. Uh, Dodgers mm-hmm. were always a third, my third team. 
Hmm, um, that's surprising. Yeah, always was because you know it's that West Coast thing. I don't right. know if we talked about that. I getting my shows mixed up, but yeah, you know, in, in back in the day, you didn't get the box scores, and I was always reading the box scores every day, seeing what players did and tracking players and and so forth. And the West Coast was such a mystery, you know. Right. We, we didn't see the games; we just read about them, and there was just this mystique. So I always liked the Dodgers growing up. Uh, they were the third team, and it was just a thrill for me to make it to Dodger Stadium when I moved out there. Uh, yeah. Just lost them, and then I, and then I went often. I went, I, w- I went to many games. My buddy. Um, Kevin and I went uh, all, you know, I, I don't know how many games I went to in the six years we were there, but a lot. We went to opening day like three or four years in a row and, and loved it. But they're, they're a distance third. They're a distance third. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Dave Roberts. I, yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. Um, <laughs> he's not that type yeah. of guy either. I know. I know. He's so usually real even keel, low, you know, but wow. But on paper, that team absolutely – Absolutely yeah. should at least get to the World Series for, for out, without, yep. without question. So, um, yep. you know, my Cubs and Indians are probably, you know, both. I, I, you know, I think the Cubs may sur- surprise some people. They're not going to win that division. The two central divisions, I think, are the weakest divisions in baseball. But, you know, I don't see either one of those teams. Uh, you know, Milwaukee in the National League Central is really, really strong. Um, yeah. You know, the Cardinals are How always, about Atlanta? Getting, what do you think about Atlanta? You know, I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to battle. But I think the, what the Mets did in this offseason, um, I think – and I think Frankie Lindor is going to have a monster year after being one year in New York. He's, you know, he's a top five player. Um, he, I think he's okay. going to – now that he's settled in and, and, and kind of com- more comfortable, I think the Mets are, are, are going to be the team to beat out there. I, I, that whole division um, is good. But Atlanta's still going to be good, even losing Freddie Freeman. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they replaced Thank you. him. Thank you, Atlanta. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice pickup for the Dodgers. Um, yeah, the Dodgers yeah. are stacked. Yeah, but the, the Phillies are good. The Marlins are good. I think the Marlins oh. are going to surprise some people. Um, so that okay. that division, that both the Eastern divisions in, in baseball are I, I, by far are the best. And the, in the American League East, hands down, the best in baseball. Not, it's not even close. Um, so right. we'll see. So I am actually doing a uh, – I've kind of had to change things. I was originally going to do a, a preseason show. I've done this since I've been like 10 years old, just on my own. I would predict the, the, the standings and playoff teams and World Series winners. And I kind of expanded that to like some of the major awards. Uh, so mm-hmm. this year, since I have the sports bias show, I decided to do a show on it. And as I was getting ready for it, I just it was too much for me to do in one show. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll break it up into a division uh, thing. So I'll do six shows on the six different divisions and break it down that way. Um, and then uh, I went a little more elaborate and creating all these new scenes and graphics and so forth. So uh, as soon as we get done, I am recording the National or American League East episode. Uh, and then I'll nice. one a day for the next uh, six days. So uh, but that's going to be fun. It's been fun. I love going through baseball and going through stats and all that stuff. So uh, if you follow me on uh, Facebook on Sports Bias with Cleveland Jay and you love baseball or love sports, those are going to be fun shows. Um, but American League East is coming up uh, tonight. So, um, so yeah, right. That's it. Um, I had a couple other things. Uh, I, I wrote some stuff down. And uh, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. The point is you can't read it because I can't even <laughs> read my own scribble, <laughs> scribble scratch. Um it looks like a round. Oh, it was announcements. It was announcements. Ah, uh, there we go. Um, so I will make a, just some quick announcements again. Uh, Heartbeat Radio, which you've heard me talk about. I have not dropped the next Love episode. It. Love it. That was supposed to be something today. Not going to happen. I will I will do that tomorrow. Uh, I think that one uh, next episode is called, uh, entitled, uh, uh, ah, see, uh, Might Get Loud. <laughs> Might get loud. There we the go. Next one. This was you found me. That was, I've had a lot of fun doing the show. So that's gonna drop. You can find it on Spotify. These are only Spotify uh, uh, shows. Our podcast now, or our show is now available in podcast form, audio podcast on Google, Amp, Apple, and Spotify. So you can find us there. Uh, another plug for Elevation Nights. I am getting. We're getting closer and closer. For me, have not heard on the uh, media passes yet, but um, I can't wait. I can't imagine that they're not going to open with Lion from the new album. I'm going to be shocked if they don't start there. But I, um, I am getting more and more excited about this. Um, Yay! Uh, I also will be going to the pop up event in Columbus in June, June 11th, as well. Nice. 
So I'll be going to the Elevation pop-up event there. Um, exciting announcement here. The I mentioned last week that Maverick City is on tour this summer. <clears throat> and the link is the link for Elevation Nights and the Kingdom Tour for Maverick City is in the description on YouTube and Facebook, so you can click those links there to get tickets. Uh, I just found out that um, Maverick City this Sunday will be performing live on the Grammys. Whoa! So that's going to be exciting. Now, yeah. I know that not everything they do live at the show airs. Uh, sometimes so we'll see we'll we'll see what happens so i don't know where that is in the program if it's during the live right. bro- broadcast um that would be awesome if it is uh yes so yep. and i'm anxious to see if brandon lake will be with them uh, with that so i'm i'm super excited about that i i mean i don't know what song they're gonna do but if they i mean it doesn't seem like a song they would do for this um but if they if they if they do dry or live on the grammys i don't know if i'm gonna be able to control myself i'll, I'll just say the last time that i saw him do it live it's hard going from the extended version yeah, down to yeah. the, this needs to fit in between two yeah, commercials I version. Yeah. I, I you know, it was still great, still great, but it's like, yeah. And more. they're not going to do the extended version on the Grammys, no. but, uh, so no. it, after, yeah, maybe, maybe I, you know, I hope maybe they don't do it in that, in that, for that case, uh, uh, make it right. I love, I we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I'm excited that they're yeah. going to perform in the Grammys. Um, absolutely. Uh, and so yeah, that was that, I think, I think that's all I have. I think it's all I have. Okay. I'm going to take this off. Um, yeah. All right. So um, I don't know where we, where I put this, however. Um, there it is. Book. book. Hey. Yeah, the book is available on Amazon. Um, Doug is also working on the audio version, audio book version. Yes. So hopefully that'll come out at some point. We talked about that today a little bit. Um, yes, we did. So, um, yeah, you can pick that up on Amazon. Um uh, we're we're going to be going into this book for you know a long while. We have episodes in between when we get to it. Like last week, we had Janice Anderson. By the way, I have to you know talk about that for a second. Um, Janice was awesome. That that episode, yeah, completely caught me off guard. I was very excited for her to join us, and I kind of threw Doug into this, uh, him not knowing Janice, and said, "Hey, by the way, we have a guest." Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to see get kind of your feedback uh, from last week, Doug, and what you what you thought and so forth I, I thought it was amazing i mean janice obviously uh, is you know very gifted and very focused in on the things that she feels called to do uh for the kingdom and and so just getting to know that aspect of it and especially because it 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 ties into something that's near and dear to some good friends of ours yeah. uh, i mentioned to her that we've got uh, a friend in atlanta and they do a women's empowerment uh thing every year in uganda last year was in mozambique because uganda was shut down because of covid but um you know so seeing those you know her having a very similar focus and and ministry uh just it's just learning about her was was really neat uh obviously you know what she presented last week on the on the podcast was amazing especially as it related to uj i just love the fact that god you know, use her as a vessel to speak some things into your life, which, you know, I'm pretty sure he's going to use uh, yeah. very powerfully. And, you know, so it was amazing. I love having people on and hearing their stories and, and you know, and, yeah. And it's just, you know, it's such an encouragement. It's such hearing somebody's testimony of where God brought him from, you know, here to here is, is always encouraging and, and uplifting and, uh, looking forward to actually getting to know her a little bit more and, yeah. and, and maybe, you know, she could be a part of our conference. Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's one thing I was going to talk to you today off, off air. Cause I want to, I want to start moving on that. Um, yeah. you know, doing events and so forth is kind of in my wheelhouse. Um, I had a good, really good meeting business wise today too, with uh, my buddy, brother James, uh, with the exchange group I'm in, I'm going to be doing some work with them on the kind of on the side, um, as I'm kind of getting back in my feet. Uh, to kind of keep my yep. membership going. So it's, I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, Janice was uh, great. You know, and, and Janice and I don't know each other well. Again, we connected in that in that event in a breakout room, uh, just the two of us. And the connection mm. was so deep and instantaneous that it was just, it was one of those God moments uh, that we both recognized. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, just instant love for one of an, one another. And uh, I was so excited to have her on. But I, I wasn't yeah. prepared for how profound it was for me personally, like you mentioned, it, it almost like appeared like we planted her there. Um, <laughs> and I promise you, we didn't. Um, you know, the, the two things that kind of 
stuck out to me was the piece on identity that she brought up. Uh, we've talked about yeah. that a lot, and we'll continue to talk about it a lot on the show as I struggle through that. Um, and the family piece, uh, I thought was I was so I was so moved by that, and 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 really not struggling with that, but just trying to make my way through that with with how I'm walking with Christ now, and it's just different, mm-hmm. and how yeah. that plays into the family dynamic for me, because um, it's 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 constant 24 seven for me. It's not like just a, a Sunday thing or whatever. It's just like everything I do, every breath I take is it's a part of me now. And so trying yeah. to figure out or navigate what that looks like in my family and how I parent my kids and so forth. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at others. I'm looking at others that are, are, are believers and walk with Christ and how they, uh, how that factors in their parenting and so forth. So that, that piece really was, was powerful for me. And I did, I did, break that piece off. I did clip that piece out and, and did a clip on that and it's on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So if you don't want to watch the full show, which I highly encourage you to do because Janice was amazing. Or listen. Uh, or listen or show. listen on Google, Apple, and Spotify. Um, yes. uh, yeah, you can listen to the, the, the family piece too because it was, it was really, really great. Um, and I know Amen. Janice shared it on her on her pages as well and you know, she had some, some of her people comment and so forth. So yeah. It was great. And again, like you said, I, I love hearing stories. And I, I want to start making more of a conscious effort and bringing people in. And, and I don't want it to take up all, maybe necessarily all episodes every single time, but maybe they're going to be people who just want to sell a portion of their story or, or maybe just a portion of how it relates to family or whatever, whatever. But right. uh, I definitely want to kind of build that part of the show and, and, and provide an opportunity to people to, to share their testimony and, and hear their stories. I'm just, I'm fascinated. Like you said, you were fascinated about their stories and, 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 and so mm-hmm. forth. So if you are listening and, and, and you want to come on the show, uh, we started with our friend Karen, which was, was really great. And I really appreciated that. Cause I, I feel like Karen stepped out outside of her comfort zone to do that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that was really powerful. Uh, and then, you know, having Janice on and her wives on. And you know, we have a list of others mm-hmm. that we're, we're looking at bringing on. But if you are listening to the show ever and want to come on the show and share your testimony, let us know. Reach out to us on Facebook uh, and things like that. So, um, yep. yeah. So, anyway. So, I, yeah, I'm glad we got a check in a second to, to uh, uh, thank uh, Janice Anderson for coming on last week. And please go check out the episode or listen to the episode. Uh, check out the clip on family that we posted on Facebook and YouTube as well. It was a it was a great show. It was really, really a powerful powerful show. So now, and now uh, let me yeah, let, yeah wait wait wait. Yeah. I mean, I put it just a little a little plug in for Janice. If you are a woman who is struggling with your sense of purpose, destiny, feeling empowered, go check out her ministry. Yeah. Um, we can, we'll post a link. Yeah. Jay will post a link because that's what he does. Uh, and uh, and. You know, it would be worthwhile checking out what she does Absolutely. and how might she might help you. So, once again. yeah, significant life on Facebook. Um, I think it's mm-hmm. Facebook slash my significant life, uh, but mm-hmm. I think the, the name of the organization is uh, Significant Life. And uh, yeah, it's really great stuff. And it's funny because you and I both picked up on a podcast. She does some a podcast as well, and she picked up that one. What was the title of it, Doug? Don't. Um, don't carry, carry what what's not you yours. don't own. Yeah, what's not yours, or yeah, you don't, don't own. carry what you yep. don't own. Yep. Uh, independently, when Doug and I were kind of researching Janice, we both saw that episode, and that one really hit me. So she has some really great stuff, yeah. really great resources. Excuse me, definitely follow her, um, and thank you, Doug, yep. for for uh, uh, mentioning that because she, she's awesome. And yeah, again, we're, you're not you're not done seeing Janice. I guarantee you. Um, yeah. And if you if you if you did see it, or when you do see it, you'll understand that she's she. she I don't think she'll have any problem coming on the show and talking about Jesus. So. Um, yep. Uh, but anyway, so so thank you for that. All right, Doug. All right. We are going to dive deeper into God. That that took what an hour? Oh no, four, thirty-two minutes <laughs> into that. <laughs> so please don't say an hour. No, we're, we're, we're thirty-two <laughs> minutes into this already. Um, I know. We could talk for days, Jay. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's just. I mean, there's so many more yeah. things that I want to bring up because we had said we were going to do certain <laughs> things. I just not mentally and emotionally able right. to do much more than I've done today already. But yeah, yeah, there's other kind. Of, you know, they're, we're still figuring it out. We're still figuring. We it out. are. Um, all right, Doug. Let's so, roll with it. Yeah, all we right, are going to dive deeper into uh, the family. The first, the foundational identities of the church. Uh, rediscovering yes. God's divine 
uh, design design for his yes. church. Um, so I will let you take it off and get a recap where we're where we've been and where we're going. Yeah, so just a, a basic recap, especially for people who may be joining us for the first time. Um, wrote the book addressing how we as a Christian culture and culture in general kind of view church. And, and the three things, my three conclusions were uh, based on my own experience and based on, um, this is getting weird. There we go. Okay. I told you, I'd like, I have, <laughs> that's how the timer must have happened. Cause I have, I have no idea. It's my trackpad uh, or something. I, I, you know, uh, that's, I have, good. uh, I don't know. I have some things going on. With, like I shake like Parkinson type things, which we're going to be testing as well. Like, another great thing. But I, I like on the keyboard and mouse, you can really see it. Cause it's, they're really fine, but I'll, I yes. hit keys and click all the time. When I'm, and it takes me five times as long to get through anything. If my hands are near the keyboard. So anyway, sorry, go on. All good. All good. All right. <laughs> so my conclusion again, based on my experience and, and uh, observation and doing, you know, kind of uh, some, outer polling with friends, and I've got a ton of them within the Christian church community, of just how we view church. Um, and, and I've landed on three things that are kind of commonplace in terms of how we typically approach church. And that's, we approach it as a place, it's a building, um, it's an event or a service, right? We go to a church event or church service, or it's an organization. We, hey, there, that was cool. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we look at it as I belong to this group. I'm a member of this organization. So, or a combination of those three things, uh, and knowing that, but also understanding that in the Bible, God does not describe church in any of those three ways. So culturally we've turned church into something that it was not meant to be right. This is when Jay mentioned divine design, uh, just a, a little bit ago, that's we need to get back to understanding God's divine design for his church. And, and over a series of a few years, God kept giving me these revelations on the major identities of the church. And I say revelations, but it's right out of scripture, right? So I'm reading through the Bible and I realize, wow, this is how God describes and defines church. Um, and, and it started in the, with the family, which is the one we're going to dive deeper in today. But then there's also the bride which is the bride of Christ. Jesus is coming back for his bride. Um, he, there's going to be a marriage uh, of Jesus and his bride, and we're going to have the marriage supper of the lamb and speaks of in the book of Revelation and other places. Um, so the bride is the second identity. The third identity is the body. This is the one we probably more default to within the church community. Um, it's in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 talks about that we're members of a body. Jesus, he's the head. We're the different members based on our giftings and our callings and our positions that he's placed us in. You know, he, uh, the analogy that Paul uses is the, you know, some of us are eyes, we see things. Some of us are hands, we do things. Some of us are feet, takes us places. Uh, and, and so that's that um, description of we are the body of Christ. Then the fourth identity is the temple. And we tend to see this and view this a little bit more um, within the church community as individuals, right? In 1 Corinthians 6, it says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, um, but we're also his temple corporately. And one of the passages I got in, in my opening revelation of Proverbs 24, 27, uh, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, it says that we are living stones. Um, we are being fitted together in the house of God. Um, so there's a temple that's a, a corporate aspect temple. And then finally, the fifth identity is that we are the army of God. Uh, and I want to be very clear when I say this, that really in the context, it's an army spiritually. We are an army in the spiritual realm. We, you know, we wage warfare, Second Corinthians chapter 10, not with the flesh, not in the flesh, not with other people, but we wage warfare in the spiritual realm against demonic forces, Satan himself, um, that's who our battle is against. So when I say we're the army of God, I don't want it to be misconstrued and misinterpreted that I'm saying we need to, you know, get weapons and start taking over or, you know, governments and that type of thing. That's not where I'm at at all. Um, so those are the five identities. They correspond to our personal identities. Um, you know, we are children of God. Therefore, we're in a family. Um, we are 
betrothed saints, and that word saint means holy one in the Greek language, uh, but we are engaged. That makes us the bride of Christ. Essentially, if you were engaged in Jewish culture back in the day in the Old Testament, probably even currently today in Jewish culture, you're as good as married, right? You may not technically be married yet, but once you're betrothed to somebody or you're engaged, you could consider yourself a bride. Uh, it would be very rare for somebody who's engaged to not or to break off the engagement, um, the betrothal. Uh, and then thirdly, we are members, and that makes us a part of the body. Fourthly, we are individual temples, but we're also corporately temples. And fifthly, we are soldiers. Paul talks about this. You've been enlisted as a soldier. That makes you a part of an army. So we those corporate identities are birthed out of our individual identities, and each identity has a corresponding trait. As the family, we learn to love. And again, we're going to deep dive a little bit more uh, into that. Oops. Sorry. Live TV. Got to love it. Live TV. Yep. Let me try to get back up here. Uh, here we go. Ta-da. All right. Um, so in the family, we learn how to love. God teaches us how to love. Uh, as the bride of Christ, we learn purity and intimacy. As the body of Christ, we learn unity, how to get along with each other and how and, and understanding how powerful unity is in the spirit. Uh, fourthly, as the temple, we experience God's glory, his presence. Uh, when we come together, we're, Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. And finally, as the army, we learn to operate in God's power. Um, and again, in the spiritual realm, we get to see victories. We get to see advancement of God's kingdom. Uh, those type of things that are important, the things that he commanded us to do, right? Go in the world, make disciples, um, you know, very important stuff. But we're starting with the family. So that's what we're going to continue to talk about today. We talked about it a little bit two weeks ago. Um, and it's really important. Really what I kind of wanted to hone in on here is is the church understanding that we, we're we kind of in this business motif uh that's kind of the style of church we've created. It's kind of the structure of church we've created. Um, so church nowadays in, in most places or in a lot of places, they really operate with a business model. Um, if you look at Christian organizations and ministries, a lot of it is tied into how we can make your church grow, how your church can reach more people. And, and I'm not saying those things aren't important, but they're birthed out of the idea that we're mainly an organization and our job is to perform well uh, from a business standpoint, right? All the measurements and metrics. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. That you, no, all good. That you would see, um, you know, in a business, we've kind of adopted those into the church. And we've said, you know, how do we grow? How do we sustain, uh, you know, people in, being a part of our congregation? How do we get them involved in the different ministries and departments of the church? You know, um, it really does run on this business model. And we've left behind the idea, which again, I believe is the divine design idea that primarily the church is supposed to be a family. And like, just, I, I want everybody to imagine themselves, your families, picture your families, and then picture operating your families as a business like how wrong that would be, uh, you know. Well, some like, people do. Yeah, you know? well, that's probably true. Yeah, you know, um, but it's like you have a job. You have a job description, you you know, and there's there's something, you know, just that doesn't work there for me. Yeah. Um, and I imagine it doesn't work for God because God <laughs> never <laughs> described his church as a, as a business right, or an organization. Right. He described it as a family. And families should have a certain dynamic to them. And I and I understand this. And, and this is partly the, the big hurdle that everybody has to overcome as an individual and, and individual churches have to overcome is that we have such dysfunction these days in our families, right? My parents were divorced when I was six. Um, my brothers, you know, and I didn't always get along well. Uh, and, and some of that was based on the fact that uh, you know, we had this defunct dysfunction that started with our parents separating and being divorced. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, that put a lot of pressure on my mom. Um, you know, so we carry these things throughout our lives, all these 
you know, traumas, triggers, um, lear learning patterns of behavior that aren't healthy. And then we become a part of a church and, 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 we, and we're called to operate as a family, but we don't know how to operate as a family because of our own dysfunction in our past. Yeah. And then you take, take, take churches. Go ahead. You're going to say, I was something. just going to say, I, I, I pulled that. this quote out. Um, mm. that really, when I, when I first passed through the book, you know, when it first came out, I highlighted this and it spoke to me this week. Um, and I didn't, I, I thought about not using it because I didn't want to dwell on the negative, but I think people can relate right. to this, especially in the world we live in that. How are we supposed to demonstrate love to a hurting, dying and broken world when we can't even do it amongst our own family? Um, <clears throat> So I think, I think the importance of what you're talking about here, you know, it, it's so profound and I think it's something that everybody can relate to. And even if they are one of those few families that are, you know, don't deal with, you know, issues, which I, there's not many out there, um, they can certainly right. see the world we live in and they certainly have friends and extended family that are dealing with these things. And, um, and I think a lot of people haven't thought about how it relates to the church. I think it's just, you know, they either, it's just life has happened, um, but I think there's few people that have thought about it in terms of, you know, God, God's design uh, for us. So, right. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll use an example. There was a pastor friend of mine who, who's a surfer out here and kind of grew up in this area. And uh, he was trying to, you know, be a witness to some of his buddies who weren't believers yet. And uh, they were out surfing and he, and he's saying, Hey, you should, you know, you should think about, you know, the Bible, Jesus church, and his response was, um, you know, you guys can't even get them along amongst yourselves. Right. Why would I want to be a part of that? Right. So a lot of people from the outside perspective are, yeah, they're just going, man, it's a, it's a mess. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, you know, and that's what we see. That's what gets highlighted all the time are all these churches that are, you know, saying bad things about other churches. And yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's bad in the church. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be as, yeah. forthright and transparent as I can be. There's, there's stuff that's bad. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, scandals or, you know, systems that, you know, I'm addressing a lot of that in my second book. Um, you know, so we've got to clean the messes up. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and one of the primary ways I believe that we get to a healthy place, uh, in the church is that we go back to the idea of seeing church as family. Right. You know, and I mentioned my own family. Right. We we have our issues. We had a lot more of them <laughs> in the past, but we still have them. Yeah. Uh, but we're family. You know, I if my sister, which technically is not a blood relative, I'll probably use a different example. If one of my brothers needed a kidney, I'd be on the operating table in a heartbeat if I was a match. Right. Why? Because they're my brothers. They're my family. Right. And we need that dynamic back in the church today. Right. Instead of viewing other churches as competitors, as, you know, people that we don't agree with their theology or their doctrine, we need to understand we are a part of the same family. We're supposed to be working towards the same goal. Right. And we should be doing it together, you know, uh, even in spite of some of our minor discrepancies of, you know, you believe this, I believe that. Right. There, there's this old phrase in the goes back a ways in the Christian community that says, you know, in, in the essentials, unity, in the non-essentials, um, liberty, and in all things, charity, right? So in the, in that, which means love, right? So in the essentials, core doctrine, orthodox theology, we, we need agreement, right? Yeah. We, we, we don't want to be outside of what the Bible actually says. But in the things where the Bible doesn't really lay it out super clear, um, you know, or we have our preferences, like some people think, you know, certain things don't, you know, happen anymore, miracles and those type of things, right? I shouldn't be unwilling to work with somebody based on, I believe this, you believe that, and if it's a non-essential. And those things are non-essentials, right? They don't affect salvation. They don't affect, yeah. you know, the nature of God, those type of things. And then in all things love, and this is really where it's like, look, bottom line, I should be able to love the guy who goes to the different church down the street. If he needs somebody to mow his lawn and nobody else is willing to mow his lawn and he's unable to mow his lawn, I should be willing to mow his lawn. I mean, that demonstrates love that says, look, you know, 
and I should do that for anybody. I mean, but you know, the Bible says do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. So we've got to turn a corner here. We've got to get back to understanding that this is God's design. Yeah. I, I, I think this is where, you know, most people, this is the part that's so frustrating to me is the idea is so simple. And you see this, idea of love conquers all and love always wins all these things when when these random things happen uh in the world where we we we, we re unite over certain things for it's such for a brief period and it just it doesn't yeah. sustain itself but in the world we live in i don't think anybody i mean there's certainly people that are thriving throughout this uh you know, financially their businesses are thriving is actually all this has been a benefit of it. there's certainly all those people out there but I think in general, there's very few people that don't recognize that the world's in trouble. You know, whether you're yeah. a believer or not a, not a believer, you have to see how divided the world is, uh, how much division there is and how much, you know, angry anger there is and, and all, all the things we've already talked about that, that people have to recognize that the alternative is love and support. I mean, how much better would your day be Mm. Not just your life, but just your your day be if you treated people kindly and people treated you kindly. And again, you can have differences. How did this, where do we go wrong where, you know, we can't have any differences even on, on, on minor things. I mean, just look what's happened in the last, you know, three or three elections or four elections and right. you know, how divided we become. And it's just, it's this way or this way. I'm going to defriend you if you're not with me. You know, it's right. like that we can't disagree. We can't even have a conversation about things. And, yeah. and I think that's where... You know, a lot of people can recognize this. So if, if, and I think most people do recognize this and understand the world's in trouble and people have to, at least I would think logically understand that unity and coming together and being able to have discussions, even though we have different opinions is the answer and to love yeah. our neighbors as ourselves and do these things for other, like you just talked about. I mean, people have to recognize that that's the answer, right? Am I wrong <laughs> to think that? I mean, no. do, do people, I mean, even again, even if you're not a believer and you're not religious, whatever, people have to know that treating others well and, yeah. you know, others, like, it's not rocket science. No. And that's I where mean, my the frustration golden, comes in. Yeah. And the golden rule, I mean, it came right out of the Bible, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? That's been around for thousands yeah. of years, right. you know, and it's, and it works whether, again, like you said, whether you're a believer or not right. a believer. Exactly. Right. I mean, so, you know, an example for me would be when the pandemic hit, um, I realized, Monica and I realized, you know, we we have an obligation to our neighbors, right? We had just moved into our community, hadn't been there six months where we live currently. And, you know, I thought, oh, okay, you know, we've got a trailer park next door. And I know that there were some older people in, in the trailer park. And so I, I just knew we had to go figure out if there was somebody who needed help. We yeah. found two old, you know, widowed ladies, um, barely speak English, right? So very, very much a communication issue for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because I, I know where's the bathroom and hello and goodbye in Spanish. That's, I know baño, you know, baño, bathroom, baño, and cerveza. Yep. That's all I know. <laughs> and, and ceviche and taco. And ceviche, yes, and I do know that. Yeah. I do miss that ceviche <laughs> pizza, man. That was so good. Um, anyway, mm. so I mean, but yeah, so it, you know, I, I obviously it was born out of a place of, you know, when the Bible says love your neighbor, there's a literal aspect to that, yeah. right? Uh, you know, I mean, it's not just, okay, well, you know, that's great in theory. And if someone happens to show up and they're in need, I, you know, I should help them right. out. No, this is like, you know, you need to go make sure that these ladies have what they need. Right you know, to, to get along. And we were buying toilet paper when toilet paper was not yeah. anywhere to be found. I mean, it was, you know, uh, bringing food, you know, whatever we could to make sure, look, you're my neighbor and, and I'm going to love you as if you're my grandma, right? Don't have any grandmas anymore. So now i got two yeah. adopted grandmas yeah. live right next door. And, and we saw a little bit of that. I think, like you said, when yeah. the crisis hits, yeah. You know, there's there's for at least a week, maybe a month, you know, people's goodwill gets notched up. But then we go right back to, right. 
you know, the crazy world we live in where we can't get along. We can't be in the same room with people. Yeah. I, it's, it's, yeah, that's frustrating. But, it, but also on the same token that it, when you think about it in the, in the, in the simplest terms, it also, to me, gives me hope because the answer right. is so simple. It is, yeah. it is, it is that simple. Um, so how can we rally people? How can we, and, and really we, it talks about leadership and that's when we, when we talk about the conference and bringing people together for this conference, you know, that's, you know, going to be one of the focal points. Right. And it's, yeah. It, Cause the answer, the solution is simple for the, for all the ills of the world, it starts there. Um, and the answer yeah. is really simple and it's right in front of us and it's already laid out for you. Like you, like you're, like you talked about in your book that, you know, God's laid this out again. And this is not necessarily about religion. Again, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's common sense and it's, you know, loving your neighbor. I mean, it's, it's our human yeah, nature. Absolutely. But I, I'll say this, you know, it should be happening across the board. It should especially be happening within the church. Absolutely. Right. We have the, we have the command, not only that, we have the new nature that God's given us where beforehand, you know, it may have been a struggle to love people who are unlovable and maybe even impossible in some cases, um, based on our own baggage and the things that we were struggling with. But when you become a Christian, you take on a new nature, you're empowered by the Holy Spirit. God gives us grace. And, and the definition, the greatest biblical definition of grace is really that which empowers us to reach a level we cannot attain on our own. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, yeah. And so we have that obligation as the church to set the example and to be the forerunners in this area. And if we, and like your quote that you had up there said, if we can't do this amongst ourselves where we're right. supposed to be family, how are we going to do it to people who really annoy us? <laughs> right? right. Really? We have, would, would have a hard time because they're, you know, persecuting or saying bad things or whatever, yep. you know, it's going to be that much harder to do that. If we can't learn to do it within the, what should be the safe confines of the church. So we've got to get back to really approaching people and having relationships with people on the basis in the context of you're my brother, my sister, my, my mother, my father in the faith. And I've got to treat you the way God expects me to treat you. And that is in love. And, yeah. and again, let me define love agape love in the Greek that God is asking us to operate in set says that it's a love that is sacrificial, selfless, and unconditional. I love you no matter what. Jesus demonstrated this by washing his disciples' feet when he knew that they were going to betray him, deny him, and abandon him, right. right? So he set the example and he says, as I've done this for you, you do it to everybody else, right? And if, I, I guarantee you, if you just sat 100 people in a church together and, and by surprise said, hey, guess what? You're, you're going to wash everybody's feet today and you're going to wash the person's feet who you least get along with that that would not go over well. Yeah. Right. But we should be in a place where that would be like, ah, oh, that's a privilege and honor for me to demonstrate the same way Jesus demonstrated mm -hmm. how love and, and humility is actually walked out. Yeah. I, 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 I the, the conference is running through my head right now. Cause I, I, again, it has to start somewhere <laughs> and it has to start with us. Um, yeah. And not that I'm sure there's other people doing great works along these same lines. We're not, we're not you know, yeah. This isn't, but, um, yeah, I mean it's so I'm I'm thinking about the conference and Doug and I have talked about taking his book and and bring it, you know, bring it into a conference form and as I'm talking this out, I'm seeing now a series of conferences with each identity being a separate uh workshop Focus. or or, or right. a different a yeah. different conference. Maybe it's a series yeah. over a year years long with 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 leadership and so forth, but uh um, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm. My brain's rattling. No, no, no. Because again, I, you've, you've talked about how important this and everything builds all this, all the five, uh, foundational identities are progressive, right? And it all builds, yes. it all starts here and the importance right. of it starting here. If we don't get this part, right. We everything can't else is all right. Um, yeah, that's, I have, a, I have a whole foundation on or a whole cha chapter on foundations and how, you know, how important that is. Right. And Paul talks about it. He says, as a wise master builder, I'm laying a foundation. Everything gets built on top of that. And we have to understand that. Yeah. If we don't get family right, the other things are off. That Not necessarily that they're wrong. I mean, you can still be the bride. You can still sure. be the body. You can still be the temple and the army. But you will not be as effective and have the impact that you should have unless you start with the foundation of the of the family. 
and you've got to build from there. Um, it, it prepares you, right? Love prepare is, is what draws you into purity, right? Your, our love for God helps us to want to be set apart for him. Us being set apart for him helps us to, and, and having love, his love in us helps us to actually experience unity in a way where we can cross, you know, problems and, and things that would normally be a roadblock or a stumbling block for us and to have unity with each other. Unity is what brings the glory of God into a, into a place. And we see that throughout the book of Acts, uh, the early church, right? It says they were all in one mind. They were all in, in together in one heart and one mind and God shows up, right? That's what he's looking for. He's looking right. for unity. Um, and then finally, that unity actually allows us to operate in his power and to actually have spiritual victories as the church, not just individuals participating in spiritual warfare, which is okay. Um, but the better thing is to be together as the church and, and the church advancing God's kingdom and the church bringing about God's victories. So yes, they're progressive and it starts at that foundational level of understanding. We have to treat each other as a family and love each other as a family. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited to help, you know, the people who eventually watch this, cause there's only two people watching this now um, <laughs> that eventually watches again. I, I have no doubt that at some point these will, you know, yeah, people will tune in, especially when we start doing the conferences and so forth. But uh, again, the answer is simple. This is where I get excited about this. It's frustrating. Like I had mentioned earlier that it's mm -hmm. so simple. Um, and we know, you know, we know the power of, of this. So, but it's also, it gives me hope and it is exciting to, to think that, you know, that it can happen quickly, you know, it, you know, it, given the right contact, the right gathering, the right people and using the right, methods of of conversation and th those different choreographies and having those discussions uh, on how we how we uh capitalize or how we um yeah how do we capitalize the the um all all everybody's gifts and yeah and and um you know and you in crowdsource solutions not that you mm -hmm. know one pastor one church has the answers but how do we tap into the collective wisdom of everybody uh, yep. to move this, move this forward, to move us closer to where we need to be uh, as God's people. So, yeah. And that's a good segue for part three on the body, which we will get to in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So you, you, you had talked about, you started talking about, and if there's more, you want to talk about the family and I'm sure we'll keep on going back to this, but you started to talk about unity, which is yes. uh, the second, the kind of the second uh, step. Is it third? What's third? Okay. Purity is purity. the second one. Purity. Purity. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so can yeah. you, if you're not, if you want to talk a little bit more about the family, but maybe if not, you could tease and talk about the progression of, you know, the, the family into the second foundation uh, with purity. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the bride is a second identity that I, I believe God is calling us into as a corporate um, church. And it's very important because, Again, we have to do this individually and as a church. And I think we have tend to focus more on it individually. That's been the case in all five of these identities, right? We, we, look, we look at ourselves, and I get, that's probably more of a uh, reflection of our society, right? Yeah. Where we're very me-focused uh, in our current culture. Um, and so we look at it from a standpoint of, well, this is what I'm called to do, when in reality, we're all called to do it, right? Um, not just as individuals, but right. corporately. And this, it kind of is the bridge between love and unity in the sense that churches, they've set themselves apart in a bad way uh, or in a, in a way that's selfish, in a way that's um, reclusive, yeah. uh, exclusive, right? We said, we've, like you said, we've got the answer. Nobody else does. You know, they're all wrong. We're right. Um, and, and that's grievous to God's heart. Yeah. He, he wants us, he wants us to work together in order for do that. In order to do that, we have to get rid of our dealing with our corporate impurities, our corporate sins. Right. And that's, those, those are some of the biggest ones. Um, so we have to set ourselves apart as a body, as a church and say, we're not going to participate in the in these things because 
they grieve God's heart. I mean, you know, and 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 most of that I, I deal with a little bit in the unity aspect of it um, when I unpack it. But it really is understanding that, you know, gossip about the church down the street, um, you know, people who feel it necessary to call out people's corporate sin. Right. right. You know, let's just say there's there's a big church that's struggling right now. Uh, worldwide church. I'm not going to mention them by name, but everybody who's been paying attention knows who they are. Um, you know, that's it's not my job to get online and say, right. you know, look how look how evil this church is or bad this church is. Are there issues? Yes, um, but there's systemic issues across the yeah. church world, right? That have fed into this becoming a reality, yep. um, and we've got to deal with that. So instead of taking, you know, trying to take the speck out of that church's eye when you have a log in your <laughs> own, right? Deal with your own log, yeah. right? And every church that says, you know, my church has it right, you know, my pastor preaches 100% perfect theology, correct sermons, right? Is fooling themselves. Yeah, just go on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> right. Search. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, exactly. And so it's not, it's not the church's job to try to correct other churches or to, you know, protect everybody else on the, you know, from a certain church or whatever. Yeah. That's God's job. It's God's job to deal with them. Your job is to deal with your junk and yeah. every church has it. So yeah, that's the, so there's that separating yourselves corporately from the things of the world. And that includes broken systems and broken sisters. Um, maybe I'll get more into that as we, we delve into the bride next week, but it's really setting ourselves apart and saying, God, we're willing to be used by you, right? And the focus is in the right place. My, yeah. As the church, our focus needs to be on Jesus. It doesn't need to be on whatever else is going on around us uh, other than what he's called us to and the people that he's called us to. Yeah, I, 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 it's very well said, said Doug. Um, I think of how I, it's... I love how in the book and in, 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 our, in our discussion so far is how you really talk about the individual aspect and the corporate aspect and how they're related, mm -hmm. you know, in that it's, it's so easy. And we, we attack a lot of our problems like this as we jump into that, that bigger solution, that corporate solution without dealing and addressing the things that are illing ourselves mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and not understanding how that affects our relationships, our conversations, our behaviors um, that are then, you know, affects the corporate, but it's, for me, it's a, it's a, it was a great reminder and, and yeah, I guess reminder that all those things are related, just like there's a progression, what you're talking about in the identities, there's that progression as well, that if we don't address these things on an individual level, um, how are we going to be effective on the corporate level? And I love that. And I, and one of the things that I, I mm -hmm. see in, in the, in, in the, in the church, how do you, what do you say the American Modern American, uh, modern American church, church, um, Mac. And, th and this, you could, you could apply this to anything on the individual level, on the corporate level and any bureaucracy you're talking is that we see life and we see all these different things as competition, these different churches, these different dominations, uh, competition, uh, mm -hmm. and, in, you know, in, in, in like that aspect has always been there to some extent, but really over the last 20 years, and maybe if you tie it back into, you know, the start of social media, start of the internet, I don't know. Um, but we see things as competitive. Again, like my yeah. church is right, this is right, this is the right way to do things, and you're wrong. Instead of, again, having discussions. So, again, this is me going back to my frustration um, and yeah. how we get people outside of that thinking. Um, and, and it's something we'll strategize with and go ahead. Uh, you're gonna say. Yeah, no. And you brought up a really good point. I'm glad you did. Cause I, I did want to dive back into that aspect of it is that we have to be healthy first as individuals, yeah. you know, in order to be a healthy part of yeah. the, the bigger, the, the, the corporate. Right. And if we're not, we're going to drag whatever unhealthy thing we have right. into that aspect of it. Right? right. I mean, like if you're, if you gossip, individually, you're going to gossip corporately. I mean, yeah. you know, that's just a part of the nature of, of what you've allowed to be active in your life. And, and as unhealthy as it is, um, you've got to deal with it first as an individual, yeah. and then you'll be able to have a healthy, uh, 
you know, participation yeah. in the corporate aspect of things. I, it reminded me of one scenario. I had a, a friend who was a worship leader and one of his sons went up to a, a, a bigger church actually in Ohio. Um, you know, and this person was really well known at the time, you know, had a lot of airtime, uh, you know, in the Christian community and the, in the Christian world on TV and, and, uh, you know, had become very well known and, and decently respected. I'd say, uh, you know, not saying he's the end all be all, but he, he opened up a ministry school where they were training, you know, kids. I don't know if it was a Bible college necessarily or not, but something along those lines. So this friend of mine, his son went to participate in that and, and to be a part of the school. And what he found was the most cutthroat culture, uh, based on the fact that they all viewed themselves as competition, yeah. right? There can only be one. It was like yeah. the Highlander, you know, where they were backstabbing and, and undermining each other and talking about each other and doing everything they could to step over each other to try to get to this elevated ministry position. Yeah. And again, that's the culture we've created. It's not just in ministry schools or Bible colleges right. or seminaries. It's in the church where it's like, you know, with this system of us having, you know, one or two people up front, you know, being on the stage has become like the most important thing. It's in worship culture, right? As sad as that is, I've yep. been in it for my entire Christian life, 35 years, you know, and it's like, again, when you view somebody as your competition, you know, you're not like here, you, you go first. Right. It's, it's wait, that's my spot. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm going to fight for it. And, and these are the things that have got us in where we're at and we're going to have to deal with them both as individuals setting ourselves apart and, and learning to lay down the stuff that's unhealthy and sinful and taking on the stuff that says, no, I'm called to love. I'm called to serve. I'm called to bless. Uh, I'm to celebrate somebody else's victories and not, you know, be so jealous and mad that they weren't my own. Right. right. So we have to deal with it as individuals. And then we have to take it to the corporate level and say, as a church, we're no longer going to view the church down the road as our enemy or our competition or somebody who, you know, we disagree with. And so we have to badmouth them. I mean, it's just basic stuff, yeah. but, you know, right. it's it's stuff that we're going to actually have to deal with. Yeah. And I think, I think um, that's why I'm so excited about, uh, you know, the organization I mentioned that I'm involved with exchange and, and chore choreographing conversations and, and really, mm. again, tapping into the collective wisdom. And I I've seen how change can happen at scale really quickly, um, mm -hmm. and, which is contrary to how we normally view change. Um, right. That, but I've seen it time and time again. And I think, you know, building this conference and kind of having that in my mind as we, as we build this conference and, and coming up with the right questions and the right activities to really, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, drive Accelerate. change. Yeah. Drive yeah. change in, 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 in a, I guess the speed, the speed to scale for lack of better mm -hmm. words. Uh, I've seen it, I've seen it. And I, I think it's again, a really simple solution. Um, and, Again, the idea, the solution is simple. So if we can kind of marry those two ideas, if we have the right conversations, and and again, I think we can we can move us past that competitiveness and, and the division amongst the the leadership in the Christian church um, yeah. relatively quickly. I know that might people might see that as naive, uh, but if you haven't seen it happen in real life, which most people haven't, um, right? But I I can you know you know and maybe we'll maybe we'll maybe on the show we'll ask some questions and, and do that in the next uh, little while. So I, we can kind of show people and, you know, I'm kind of spurring this around you, Doug, you haven't experienced it either, but um, it maybe kind of show people the p possibilities of, and the potential of how change can happen quickly and how you can quickly dive into and tap into uh, mm -hmm. the collective wisdom to, to drive that change. Uh, maybe we'll kind of, ask these questions throughout through the show um yeah I'm, make, I'm making no sense right now but um, no 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 you're, you're, you're with totally this, with this conference but again <laughs> you're, um, it's possible. You're totally it's possible. hey yeah i've been married uh got married second time my wife and i've been together for you know you know almost 11 years 12 years now um both the best men at my both my weddings were michigan fans so what does that say That's anything's it. possible 
You know, we possible. can put aside our differences and we can love anybody. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, you know, I was going to mention that earlier, not the Michigan aspect of things, but just, you know, the fact that, you know, you, you get two guys that that's how, you know, the kingdom of God is real. Like a friend of mine in Texas, he's invited me last year and he's invited me again this year, I think um, for a, a men's retreat uh, down there. He's a San Francisco 49ers fan. He, lives close to Dallas and you can't say they live in Dallas when you live in Fort Worth because they get mad. Um, but you know, he, he despises the Cowboys, right. Um, you know, so he and I get in the same room together and, and we love each other yeah. regardless of our affiliations. You know, that's how, you know, it's real, right? Yep. So change is right. possible. Love, love is possible. All those things are possible. I do want to echo and agree with you because uh, as you were saying that, I really felt we'll need to dive in a little bit to my chapter on change, mm -hmm. you know, how God uses change to change us mm -hmm. um, because that's important. I mean, Absolutely. people need to understand they don't have to stay the same, right? And I think we've bought into this lie individually and, and maybe to some extent corporately that this is who I am, yeah. right? You know, and, and you need to deal with it, right? And and not not even entertain the idea of, Look, your unhealthy stuff is probably not is is as bad for you as it is for everybody else around you, right? If not worse, and and change is possible. It is. Possible. You don't have to stay. You don't have to stay the same, especially right. if you're a believer, because that's God's goal for you, right? Romans eight twenty nine says He predestined us to be conformed to the image of His Son. So He's not just wanting you to hold on and wait till heaven comes. That's not yep. the Christian life. The Christian life is be changed so that you can be changed. Right. So we're going to have to deal that. We're going to have to go into that. I think that was good for you to bring that up and, and it'll be a help for us to kind of, you know, perpetuate as we go forward here. Yeah. My, my, my head is spinning now, which, which is exactly what I need. It's already, it was already spinning for us, but I, I've, been, I've loved this idea of the conference and I kind of have a vision for how to bring your message and your book and your work uh, forward uh, in a way, you know, utilizing the stuff that I, I know and, and, and my expertise yeah. Um, I'm excited about the possibilities and I think we can quickly get others excited. Uh, so, you know, we'll be, we'll be telling you more when, once we, we hammer this out, but I think over the next couple of weeks, Doug, I'd like to, to, to work on this and, um, I'll come to you, uh, in the next week or so with some ideas and kind of show you. And, and if we can do it in a way that at least tease people to show people what is possible by doing something yeah. on the show, we will, and maybe we can't, we'll see. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, Just me as too. excited. Me too. Uh, hour 15. Not bad. Hey, not bad at all. Not bad. See, now this is the part. We say that. I've said that in three shows. Where, hey, it's an hour and 15. <laughs> and then now it's an hour and 45. So right. if you want to check out now the content, the, the content of the show is probably over right now. Yeah. So if you want to check out now, you can. But if you want to stick around and hear us be funny and just kind of hang out and we get to hang out together, stick around. Uh, because you don't know when we're going to sign off. It might be an hour from now. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 again, I think, uh, again, this is me just talking out all these, the stuff spinning in my head is it has, again, it has to start somewhere. And I think your book is, is, uh, uh just a great starting point to, to start these conversations and, and to move that, this idea forward. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. so excited about, that part of it and doing this with you. And, and again, we're still trying to figure out this show and what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, I was thinking this week about we've Doug and I've had a great time doing the show so far, you know, having yeah. Janice on last week was just awesome. And having Karen on and having our wives on, you know, there's things that we kind of want to do with the show, which we, you know, we'll kind of let it happen. But then I think about it from a marketing standpoint, um, that maybe we need to talk about some things that are not controversial, but some things that people want to know. Um, like kind of what I kind of thought questions that I have that I want to know what, how the Christian world and Christian leadership handles and addresses. And I, you know, that's part of what I want to do. Um, and we're not there yet. So I, but there's part of me that's like, okay, how do we get people to click on stuff? You know? <laughs> so because again, I think once we start working 
with this conference and that idea. I think that's what's going to be the, the key. Um, I don't know if people yeah. want to hear me rant along about sports and all these other things or, you know, my story or whatever. So we're still trying to figure it out. So I appreciate the people that are listening or watching and then, you know, watch the clips or whatever. I know we're both long winded and we can go long, but we're still figuring this out. Again, we said we would do this if nobody's listening, cause we get to hang out together and have these conversations. Yep. And that's kind of how we do the show. Uh, as soon as we go yep. live after the first little bit, I totally forget about most of that. And it's just, you know, me hanging out with you and, and so forth. So, yeah, well, I know this is our chance to reconnect and, and I don't think we were ever, you know, uh, ambiguous about this is us having a conversation and other people getting to eavesdrop. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what it is. Um, you know, but here's the way to fix that. People who are listening, give us your questions, give us your ideas for a show, you know, give us some stuff that we can build on and we'll do it. We promise you, if you, if you tell us, you know, can you talk about this? Well, I should say within reason, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to have a show around it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as I, as I think about it, even from a marketing standpoint and that click standpoint, I think about where this show is going and, and talking about this conference and yeah, I want to be able to do this and hang out with you and do that. But I also, I also want to use the show and this platform to move that your movement forward. And, and the idea of, are we doing church wrong and rediscovering God's design, right. uh, divine design for his church. I want to move that forward. Right. And, 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 and so I think as we move forward and we get closer and starting designing the, 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 the workshop or the conference and the workshops and the content of that. Um, mm-hmm. I think that'll be a, it'll be a much more focused approach to what we're doing. And yeah. I think that'll help. Um, and maybe we lose some of the, the, the playfulness or I don't know, playfulness, but that I guess our hangout time a little bit, right. Uh, which yeah. we, we'll do a different show. We'll do a different show. Yeah. So once we, once Absolutely. we grow that, maybe that's, or maybe that's a separate show that we do. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. All right, my friend. Um, yes, sir. You got other stuff you need to do. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> so, um, ah. It's 4.15. Um, I have to do the Sports Bias with Cleveland J show. At least record the American League East preview. Yep. I do have one day leeway. I will say this. It's set up for opening Good. day is next Good. Thursday. Right. Um, and I think so if I have... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, I, I actually have that Wednesday. So I, I want to do it before the season starts. So I could push it one day if I don't feel ready tonight. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. All right. I'm, well, I'm, I'm, my brain, I will say, I will say, even though I'm especially tired today, it is much easier for me to do the show this time of day. So, yeah. And we had talked about that after we got off the air last week. On, and yeah. on looking at that. I do love the live aspect, even though nobody's listening now, I still love right. the live aspect or the possibility or the capability of that, even if it's not happening yeah. yet. Uh, so we talked about recording it, but I, you know, I don't know. And sometimes or we just we will. do it live. Yeah. We do it live, you know, in the middle of the day, Yeah, two people yeah. in the middle of the day, two people at night. Yeah. It's yeah. the same. We're not yeah. trading true. much. True. It doesn't matter <laughs> when. Again, it lives on on Facebook and YouTube forever. So uh, two people at night. That's right. people at night. Uh, That's good. Uh, you know, like you know, it's like one of those things. Yeah. Where I, when I start thinking about it and I start looking at the lack of analytics for the show, uh, it's like I get I get upset. It's like I was like, man, how come nobody's listening yeah. to us? But yeah. I don't want that to drive what we do, you know. So I'm trying. I try right. to get past myself with that and let God lead what we're doing and and letting yes. us figure this out and. Because there's much more to the it, show than that. It's you know, right. it's the connection between yeah. you and I, you know. Yeah. The 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 heartbeat radio started as a result of this show, uh, which I'm yeah. loving, which is getting some traction, and um, and I have yeah. some like, big ideas for that I want to talk to you about too. Um, so yeah. So. All right. We'll figure it out. We're good. We're good. We're good. We'll figure it out. All right. Yeah. We're gonna go. So Peace I, out, everybody. I did. Uh, I did. Uh, hopefully, do this properly. I mean, I'm gonna get the music ready. Uh, I'm going to turn that on, and hopefully this works. Hopefully this works. We'll see. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Make sure you check out our Facebook page and YouTube uh, page. Again, if you did not see last last week's episode with Janice Anderson, 
please go check that out. You can check her out on Facebook uh, as well, Janice Anderson or My Significant Life, Facebook slash My Significant Life. Uh, we have a clip of the family segment from last week that is outstanding. If you, even if you want to start from there, it's a great place to start. And we will see you yep. next week. Next week, everybody. <laughs>